Okay, here we see the regression results if we add the IQ test score as a control variable. We see that higher IQ uh, would predict higher wages, which seems intuitive. And we also see that the coefficient in front of the years of education goes down if we add IQ. So that's in line uh, with a very simple model where, where only um, intelligence would be the confounder and we can pretty much control for it with the IQ test score. But even if there are more confounders and even if it's not uh, clear that we have any source of exhaustion's variation of the education test score, the coefficient moves in the same direction. And surprisingly, my experience this happens very often. So uh, even if there are additional problems, typically adding a control variable, in my experience, moves the coefficient of interest in the direction you would expect from a much simpler model. To assess whether this 42 already seems like a pretty good estimate of the cause and effect of additional education, we have to think, what are the other reasons that uh, the years of education differ between the people in our sample? Are these some reasons which we would say are all sources of exogenous variations or are these probably also con some confounders? So let's think about it. What other factors could lead to variation in the level of education? To mind come, for example, parents' education, their income and their attitudes towards education, or other characteristics of a student like curiosity, social skills. Also, the business cycle may play a role. So if it's hard to find a job now, maybe people decide, oh, let's add a master's degree um, and search afterwards. To a job. But if you think about those factors, they mainly seem to be confounders. So you could also think that they uh, affect the wage through other channels except for the education. I mean, social skills is clear. Uh, this can have directly effects on the wage, not only on the education level. And maybe also your parents may have some influence. Um, on, on your wages except for just financing your education. Maybe they are well connected. Maybe they have their self uh, a company, um, uh, so they have high income and can uh, pay for an education for you, but maybe you work later at their company and so on. Um, and of course, the business cycle clearly also will have some effect on your wages. And interesting there, there may be long-term effects. So um, if you start with low wages, this may take a long time until you... Um, increase your wages, even if you just started with low wages because you were in a recession in the business cycle. Um, so given so many confounders and, and no clear, uh, no clear source of exogenous variation education, again here it seems very hard to measure the causal effect that education has on the wages. And this is a general problem we also have in, in other contexts, um, it's very hard to measure the effects of education on some variable we are interested in. But economists really actively search for settings where they are able to convincingly estimate a causal effect. For example, a causal effect of education. And here are abstracts, so these are the short summaries of two empirical articles who do so. The first, Parental Education and Child Health, Evidence from Natural Experiment in Taiwan. And the second, education and mortality evidence from a social experiment. So both basically uh, estimate the cause and effect from education on some healthcare outcome. And um, maybe let's read the first abstract. In 1968, the Taiwanese government extended compulsory education from six to nine years and opened over 150 new junior high schools at a differential rate among regions. Within each region, we exploit variations across cohorts in new junior high school openings to construct an instrument for schooling and employ it to estimate the cause and effects of mothers or fathers schooling on infant birth outcomes in the years 1979 to 1999. So what basically, the, these first sentences describe kind of the empirical strategy and uh, kind of the source of exogenous variation that is used. So there was kind of a new law which generated new schools. So basically, um, before people um, 
could not maybe continue after the sixth year because there was no school nearby. But then uh, the new school was built and the younger um, students now had the school and they were, therefore could go longer to school. This is arguably some exogenous variation in the schooling of, of, of those uh, um, students because, uh, I mean, it really doesn't depend on their abilities and characteristics. It's really in one year the school is now there and then they can go longer to school. So economists search for such natural experiments. Uh, natural experiment is basically some policy change also where you can argue hey now we have some exogenous um variation in schooling uh, between people that is not really correlated to other unobserved abilities of them um and most empirical papers basically describe why they can identify a cause effect why they have some source of exogenous variation and it's similar in the second paper and only then basically they describe the the effect in the last two sentences Parents' schooling does cause favorable infant health outcomes. The increase in schooling associated with the reform almost saved one infant life in 1,000 live births. Okay, so not bad. Um, a lot of lives saved by it. Yeah, and the, the second paper has a similar structure. We examine the effects of mortality on and health due to major Swedish educational reform that increased the years of compulsory schooling. Again, we have a policy reform and using the gradual phase in of the reform between 1949 and 1962 across municipalities, we estimate significant effects of the reform on mortality in the affected cohort. So again, um, here we had a policy change and it slowly was adapted in different cities. And that can be used again as some source of exogenous variation in the schooling um, of um, uh, different uh, Swedish children. And, and one needs this basically to estimate some causal effect. Here it's about uh, how long these people live. So why, why the first is about how whether education helps that your children stay more healthy. This is about whether it helps that you stay your, yourself healthy. Interesting here. Uh, there are not big effects. So from the confidence interval, we can rule out effects larger than 1 to 1.4 months of increased life expectancy. Also, one additional month seem, doesn't seem too much. Um, and that's only kind of the upper bound of the confidence interval. So um, I look what I have described about these uh, natural experiment in more detail in, um, in the script. So I discuss Different, uh, different aspects of it. I don't want to go into all the details here. Um, some remarks, so you might wonder, so why do we look at these very specific examples? Sweden in the past years and Taiwan uh, many years ago. Why don't we uh, always estimate the impact of schooling kind of in whole Germany or, or whole Europe or the whole world? Um, and also uh, using newer data, the problem is that often we cannot really identify the causal effects because we don't have a clear source of exogenous variation or cannot get rid of all of the confounders. So economists really look at these special settings where they really say, hey, now we can convincingly um, um, estimate the causal effect. And that may be just some countries you may otherwise not be so much interested in or some time period you would also not be too much interested in. Of course, economists also try to answer kind of larger questions and maybe more current questions. So what's the impact of uh, Corona on the economy? Um, but then the answers are typically not as clear cut. You have to make a lot of assumptions and they're more debatable. So often kind of the bigger question you tackle, unfortunately, the less clear cut your answer is often in economics. And relatively clear answers can often be... Um, given only for relatively small questions, as a very rough rule of thumb. Um, and we also see uh, both basically study, uh, study studies the relationship between education and health. However, we find that the Taiwan study finds a positive effect, a relatively strong one, they say. So more education um, reduces the probability that your children uh, die um, at birth, while the Sweden study doesn't find any big effect. So this shows that really 
effects depend a lot on the context and the exact dependent variable is hard. Uh, we have very little, very general effects that are robust uh, over all sort of settings. So, um, so in economics, there are few natural laws. A lot of results depend on the context. But uh, the more studies we have, the more we can understand nevertheless. And one more remark. So if you look at these studies in more detail, you, you see that they don't just use novel OLS estimation. For example, the first study used instrumental variable estimation. They have strategies like difference and difference um, estimation. And, and that is because even if you have a source of exogenous variation, here in uh, here it was the education, the years of education, you still need to deal with the confounders. And uh, there are different strategies. So often you, you don't have control variable for all sorts of confounders. And as you, for example, will learn later, instrumental variable technique is a nice strategy that if you observe data for the exogenous variation, that allows you to estimate the cause and effect, even uh, if you could not control for all confounders. And also difference in difference techniques, this exploit difference over time. Um, and between different regions uh, at the same time, um, this is a very powerful technique to um, estimate cause and effects. And we will also um, discuss this uh, in detail in the next chapter, actually, difference and difference estimation. But all these methods kind of require some source of exogenous variation in your explanatory variable in order to estimate a causal effect.